component this is friction and gravity and correlates with chapter 10.2 in your textbook. Your key concepts for this video are what factors affect friction, what are the types of friction, how, what factors affect gravity, and what is the difference between mass and weight. So what factors affect friction? If I asked you to give me an example of friction, most of you would go and rub your hands together. That's because friction is the force that happens when two surfaces are rubbed against each other. Now friction always opposes motion. It goes in the opposite direction of motion. So in our cartoon here, this gentleman is pushing the other gentleman forward. But there's friction between his feet pushing back, which makes it a little bit harder for our gentleman to push him forward because it's going in the opposite direction of where the motion's happening. Now, how hard it will be to shove something along and to overcome that friction depends on two things. One, the type of surface. So think about your shoes. Flat-soled slippers versus athletic shoes. Athletic shoes are much grippier. You don't slide as much. They have a higher friction. Versus flat-soled slippers will slide along very easily. They have lower friction. Or ice versus a track. Ice is very slidey, which is why it can be dangerous to drive on icy roads in the winter, which is why we throw sand down on it to make it a little bit higher friction to help reduce that sliding. Whereas tracks, where you want to really grip into the ground and run your fastest, they're very grippy. They have a high friction. The other thing that will affect the amount of friction is how hard the surfaces are pushed together. So think about this when you start driving or you can even observe other people driving, when they slam on the brakes, you jerk forward really fast because the amount of friction is very sudden and it stops very quickly. Versus if you gradually go on the brakes, you'll slowly slow down and stop because the friction is less, so it changes the amount of motion slower. What types of frictions are there? There are four types of friction. One is rolling friction. This is anything involving wheels or balls rolling along, or you rolling down a hill, rolling friction. We've also got sliding friction. Think about you going down a slide or slipping on the ice. This is sliding friction. We also have fluid friction. Fluids, remember, means to flow or move, so they can be in gases or liquids. So planes, they have to consider their aerodynamics, to see how they respond to the air resistance around them. And like fish or submarines or boats have to consider their hydrodynamics to reduce the amount of fluid friction they experience. And the last one, this tends to confuse people a little bit. This is called static friction. It's the amount of friction that holds things in place. So Charlie Brown and his gang sitting on the hill here, if this hill was a slide, they would all go whoop down the hill. But they're not. They're staying put like this phone is on the couch because there's a static friction that's holding things in place initially. Like when you go to first push something, there's that initial grippiness. Part of that is due to static friction. Let's talk about gravity. So gravity, as you know from sixth grade, is a pulling force between all objects. And yes, I mean all objects. You have gravity. Your pencil has gravity. Your chair has gravity the car, the trees, everything with mass has gravity. We tend to think of it just in terms of the planets, but absolutely everything, all these little things here in the space station, also have gravity. And it is a pulling force. Think of it like a game of tug of war. Whichever one has the stronger gravity is going to win and pull the other things towards it, which is why Earth revolves around the sun rather than the sun around Earth. This is also why apples they're here and they're pulling up on Earth and the Earth is pulling down on the apples. But when the apples get released from the tree, they're going to fall down because Earth's gravity is so much greater. In fact, everything falls to Earth at the same speed. It falls with a speed acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. So if I drop two things, they're both going to accelerate down towards the ground at the same rate, because Earth is pulling on them the exact same amount. There are two things that affect gravity. One is mass. This is why the sun is so much more massive than everything else. We revolve around the sun. The other thing is distance. 
So Neptune here is much further from the sun than Mercury. Neptune feels less of the sun's gravity than Mercury does because it's further away. Last thing, what is the difference between mass and weight? Mass, as you know, is the amount of matter in an object, how much stuff it makes up. We measure it in kilograms as its SI unit, grams as its base unit. Whereas weight is the measure of the force of gravity on an object. So your weight, depending on the gravity you experience, can change, whereas your mass, unless you like lose a limb, will always stay the same. So let's pretend I have a teleporter. This is me standing here on Earth. Apparently I got quite large. My mass is 70 kilograms. My weight is 687 newtons. I teleport to the moon. Somehow I don't suffocate, but that's okay. My mass is still 70 kilograms, but my weight is 113 newtons. It went down because the moon has much less gravity than Earth. I teleport again to Jupiter. Now my mass is still 70 kilograms. There's still the same amount of atoms in me, but my weight is way bigger. It's 1,735 newtons because Jupiter has a much bigger gravity than Earth and much bigger than the moon's as well. So mass will stay constant, weight will change. That's it. Be sure your notes hit all the key concepts and vocabulary, and feel free to try either challenge question A or challenge question B.